Hello and welcome back, it's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're playing Mini Orb which you can see is clearly a magical object shining bright and blue and pinks and yellows um, all are very relevant colors when you take a look at today's puzzle and today's grid and uh, of course I guess you know Sleuth is being very careful not to touch it who knows what kind of magical power it installs or actually strikes with uh, should you touch it um, feeling confused? Yes, you may need to be because when you take a look at today's grid, um, I'll be honest with you, it's been out for like four or five days, five, six days, something along those lines. And I've essentially avoided featuring it because it looked extremely intimidating. But enough of me trying to describe it. How about I just put it up on the screen with today's puzzle? Well, not today's puzzle. Let's try that again. Nope, wrong puzzle, wrong window. I will find it. There we go. <laughs> um, right, so Mini Orb by Dimono. And you can see very clearly that this is sort of an outline of an orb here, but there are tons and tons of Sudokus. And you can see the references that I made to the colors with blue, green, I'm gonna call this red and yellow. Now, this grid is not quite a Sudoku grid, kill surprise. Uh, this grid has five overlapping 4x4 four four Sudoku grids and four 3x3 three three Latin squares. Now, I'll take you through what each of that means, but you can see, essentially, this blue Sudoku grid is one. This yellow Sudoku grid, excuse me, is two. Um, you can obviously see the others now as I kind of pointed out the colors. So that's three. That's four. And... There is another one in the middle that you can see with these extremely thick black lines here in the center. So that's the five four by four Sudoku grids. And essentially they obey normal Sudoku rules and have to use the digits one, two, three, and four, once each in every row, in every column, and in every two by two box. So that's the four by four Sudoku grids. Now I think I featured Latin squares once before. But, you know, the key distinction about Latin squares is they don't have boxes. The only rule is you have to have unique digits in every row and in every column. Now, you can see that there is four 3x3 three three Latin squares, and essentially they are in the corners of this puzzle. So that's one, two, three, and that's the last one, that's the four. Now, what's quite unique about this is Obviously with a three by three, you don't need to use the digits one, two, three, and four. You need to pick three digits from them. Now what Demono has pointed out is those three digits have to be unique for each one. So what that means is, for example, this could be one, two, and three for this Latin square. Well, this Latin square would have to be different, it would have to be one, two, and four. Um, maybe this one would have to be two, three, four. And then lastly, this one would have to be one, three, four, to make sure essentially that you've covered all the possible sets of three choose four, four choose three. Sorry, I forgot the mathematical term for it. But obviously I've just made up these examples. I don't know if they're one, two, three, two, three, four. Uh, you're gonna have to figure out as part of solving today's puzzle, which is going in which. And then lastly, at least one thing that's maybe familiar to you, which is arrow sums. So, Digits along an arrow must sum to the digits in the attached circle. So if we take this arrow, for example, these three cells, whatever they may be, their sum must actually be in this corresponding circle. And of course, the rest is true for all of these. Occasionally, you end up with the one cell arrow sum, meaning that these two are going to be equal. Now, if you're not intimidated by handling magical orbs, and uh, you want to give this puzzle a go, link will be in the description down below. It is supposedly a one-star difficulty rated puzzle. But um, just wrapping my mind around the rules and trying to figure out, I, I have no clue where to start. So this will be an interesting solve to watch for sure. Link will be in the description down below for you to play along as usual. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. I don't know why I hit that restart button so quickly because I'm still musing about what to do in this puzzle. So 
since I have no clue where to start, I mean, I can see, actually, this arrow that I picked in the beginning is the most interesting one, because you can see that it is forced. That's one, that's, well, I don't know if that's one, and these are from one, two, and that force is a four. Yeah, maybe that's the place to start and carry on. Um, essentially, these are the minimum digits I can put. And that's the maximum digits I can put. There's no other combo that would work. This is four. One now in this two by two square can only be in here. These are from two, three. That's a four. Uh, these are also from two, three. I need to have a one down here. In fact, the one in this setup can only be there which sees this one, two, that's a one. That's now a three. Looking at these options, that's a three, that's a two, that's a three, that's a three, that's a four. Actually, maybe it is approachable, and I've just been intimidated for no reason. You can see that has to be the four, that's the two. I need one and three. Is that, that's not solvable. Um, interesting, okay. Uh, that's another one three. Am I just being blind, or is that genuinely not solvable? And these are inclusive too, for sure, but interesting. Um, I mean, that's two three. And that's one, two, three. I don't even want to pencil mark this. I mean, it's getting to the point where it's a bit ridiculous pencil marking three options when there's only four in total. So um, I don't know what value this is adding. Um, this is three, four. I mean, we may as well just carry on. That's one, two. That's two, three. And that's one, four. So the absolute minimum I can make here would be one and two to make this a three. Obviously, the alternative is that that would be a four. Three, four in here makes that one, two. That is another one, two. You can see I have tons of options here. I could do double one, I could do double two, and I can do one and two, of course. So this is a lot of options with two, three, and four. Three, four, another three, four in here. You could see three, four with a one, two, that's a one, two. And... I'm rapidly running out of steam here. Let's start thinking about this. So, so here is something. These are not double one. That would make this a two. And then what would that leave me with this cell? It can't be either one nor two. So it's not double one. Double two doesn't get us in trouble, but I'm not sure they actually have to be the same cell. I don't see like genuinely any problem with having one of them as one, one of them as two. That would make this a three. That would be a two. And I, I really so no, see no issues with these. So it's as if there is a definite two on one of these, but it doesn't make them both two. We've got two, three in here. This is from one and four. Is it time to use the uniqueness, maybe? We've got one, two in here, one, three in there, two, three, or four. I mean, we know that this these two digits are different. That much is guaranteed. So this is a two, three with either one or four. It's just not enough information. Maybe just keep going, I guess. One, four, one, four, two, three. Can't have a four on an arrow. That is definitely the one. That's the four. That gives me this one in here. So this is the one, two, three setup. That's two, three. You can immediately see this has to be the one. That's two, three. That's two, three, two, three. I don't know which two, threes they are, but I just know that they are. Um, I can keep going. I've got one, two, and three in here. So this is three or four. It's not a three. 
it is a 4, making this a 3, making this a 2, 1, 4, 1, 3, that's a 2, this is 3, 4, that's 4, 3, that's a 1, 3, 1, 2, this is looking better, this is 1, 3, remember uniqueness, this is 1, 2, 3, this would have to be a 4 to be different, and therefore these are from 3, 4, these are from 1, 4, and these are from lost track one three can I do barrel not yet I need one more cell so with these three by three Latin square maybe I'll show you after I actually solve it assuming I do but I'm fairly sure there is like a fourth set of options in here so we've done one two three we've done one three four one more of these has a one and it's going to be the one, two, four option. I just don't know which one it is. Come on, Sleuth, can you see it? Really, I'm not sure I can. Um, maybe you guys are already starting to shout at your screen possible answers that I'm just not seeing. So let me just, I'm just going to think out loud. So one of these cells, one of these three by three Latin squares is two, three, four. And then one of them is, I said, one, two, four. So these are the remaining two sets that I have. Doesn't exactly help me with these. Now I can see if this is the two, three, four, that'll be three, that'll be from two, four. I won't have a problem. And this is, if this is from the one, two, four set, that would be a one, and that would be, so what's interesting is that this is always a three. This is all, this always excludes a three. Yeah, now, let me, let me show you that again. So if this is the one, if this Latin square is the one, two, four option, well, I don't have a three, so neither of these are three, that ends up being a one, that ends up being a two, four. That's a straightforward option. Now, if it's the two, three, four option, well, I don't have a one, that ends up being the three, and again, this is not the three. So this is never three, which helps us resolve the fact that these now must be a double two with this as a four. That's very clever. I don't know if it's, I mean, it's gotta be intended. I just can't see anywhere, any other way of resolving it, really. That one gives us a two, one, two, three, that's again a four. Um, that means this is a two. So this is two and four. It still doesn't help us because it leaves us with the one, three option. That's brilliant. <laughs> that two gives us a one in here. And remind me, this was two, three, four and one, two, four. So this is the one option. This is the two, three, four option. That's three, that's one, that's three, uh, two, three two, one, let's now resolve this entire square. Three, two, three, two, uh, that's a two. Um, yeah, I will come back to this because this is now forced. That's a three, four, just because of that four, that's a one. I need three and four in here. Clearly that's the three, that's the four, two, one, and this was the one, two, four options we've said. So these are from two, four. Can't resolve this. This is from two, four again. We'll come back to it. That's clearly a two, which means that's clearly a four, that's a two. This is now one, two, I'm gonna say, yep. And again, that two tells us that's the one, that's the two, and that forces this square. Right, home stretch now. Three in here gives us a four, a three, a one, three, four, one, two. I need one and three in here. I can type. I need two and three in there. Not resolved. I mean, these clearly have to be one, three, which gives me a one, three pair. That's the four. 
that's the two because we've got another one three pair that two helps me resolve the rest and if i've not made any mistakes that's the solution to today's puzzle Ooh, i have made a mistake i'm pretty sure it should mark it as correct have i got all the arrow sums correct So one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four. So this is correct. Uh, yeah, I've made a mistake clearly in here, in this Latin square. What, where, what, how? How did I make that so badly? Let's just assume for a second, these are correct. And for that's the three, that's the two. And then I need three and four in here. That's the three, that's the four, four, two. Yeah, that's correct now. Lovely, lovely puzzle, Dimono. I'm sorry I didn't actually feature it earlier. Um, like I said, I was intimidated, but apparently unnecessarily so. Um, so that is entirely solvable. Well, highly approachable, I should say, with this as the break in, this one, one, two, four. Right, so what I wanted to remark about the Latin squares, which I want to just point out now, is you always need a diagonal through it, which you can see in each of these. So once you figure out which one is the diagonal, you can see the rest of the pattern is pretty much forced. So alongside that diagonal, in the same direction, you end up with another digit that is repeated, the three, the two, and again, the threes, the ones, the twos, the ones, the fours, and the twos. And then the ones that weren't in the diagonal, you end up with one in each corner, basically to finish things off on the opposite direction. So if that's the double one, that's the double three, then the one would be here, the three would be there. And you can sort of rapidly fill them fairly quickly if you have... I imagine you only really need like three or four digits to basically figure out which one is the diagonal. As soon as you have one of these in, in, the di in, in the corner or one of these, you just need just that little bit more information to figure out which one is the diagonal and just power through it. Right. Um, hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle. In the end, I certainly did. It wasn't, as I said, as scary as I thought it would be. And the video. And uh, see you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.